As Donald Trump just declared this an unfair trial from inside the oh. courtroom. A very un. Do you have more information on that? A very, very unfair. Is that is what the is what the what the control room is telling me right now, Ellie? This must be by Donald Trump's design how he is approaching this. I, I don't. I'm not sure how else to read it. It has to be. I mean, th this is a crash and burn strategy. First of all, I do wonder. Caitlin made a good point. This is a one. This is set for one day of testimony. Ordinarily, in a criminal case, you don't set time limits. The witness testifies as long as necessary. There seems to be an agreement here. It's going to be one day. I wonder if there's almost some sort of filibuster strategy. I'm just going to try to run out the clock with my own self-serving statements. That's interesting. The other thing that I think is really important is the judge is now considering imposing sanctions of real consequence yes. for the first time. No more just admonishments, no more sternly worded finger wagging. Mm -hmm. But when he's talking about if this continues, the judge said, according to our reporters there, then <clears throat> I will strike the testimony and draw a negative inference. That means I will assume that your testimony, Donald Trump, would have been as harmful as can be to you. And so that's sort of the real weapon that the judge has here. He's warned of it, but that's his ultimate answer if this gets truly out of hand. And, and Karen, again, clearly this was a strategy going in. Yes, I mean, for all the talk about remaining calm and doing things, you know, Trump went in there today, it seems, to, to blow things up to an extent or to poke the bear as much as he possibly could, the bear being the judge. And that may be what he wants to do. But as Ellie points out, this is going to get very expensive for him. And I'm not talking about, about you know, contempt fines. The finding by this judge could be as much as $250 million. And if he takes as much of a negative inference as he wants or can from Trump's testimony, it's expensive testimony. I mean, Trump's met, must have made the calculation already that he's lost this case. And so this way he can just go out and say, see, it was unfair. I told you it was unfair. And he's making his case in the courtroom and outside the courtroom. But Trump's used to not being, he's used to being in charge. He's not used to having a judge in charge. And when you're in court, it's about the court. It's about the judicial system. There are rules. There are rules of evidence. And there's the judge in charge. And he doesn't like that. Can I, I just want to read this quote one more time. And if you are in the court room, if, the, if a judge is speaking to you and says this, what your reaction would be as an attorney. I beseech you to control him if you can. If you can't, I will. I will excuse him and draw every negative inference that I can. Do you understand that? That's, th there's, no, there's no parsing in that. I mean, what an attorney will do, what is Chris Kyes to do here? Right. I mean, as Ellie said before, this is not a debate, right? This is not a speech. This is a court of law. There are rules of the road. There are, there's evidence, there's rules of evidence that can come in. This is a serious business here. And the judge has to make sure that the record isn't cluttered. It's not filled with things that are inadmissible mm. because that can also harm the record. And, and that's what the judge is trying to do. He's trying to protect the integrity <coughs> of the record of the case, even though he can filter out inappropriate things in his mind. Right. There's still a record here. And Trump needs to answer questions when he's asked a question. It's about the answer. It's not about what he wants to say. I want to discuss what's going on further with Laura Coates right now, seen as chief legal uh, analyst. Have you ever seen anything like this before? You know, the idea that a former president is taking a stand in this way is very historic. But the idea of a bench trial where a judge is accustomed to the antics of the defendant, not so abnormal. But here's a different issue here. This is not a legal defense that Trump is trying to put on. It is a political one. He would like to have the cameras in the courtroom because he wants to send a message of defiance. Hopefully it will bear, um, benefit him politically speaking in the long run. But this judge is very strategic. He knows full well that there is bait that is being put out in a line for him to take, hoping that maybe if on an appeal they will say that he was biased and fa against him. But in reality, what he's saying is, I'd like you to answer the questions. Why? Because I'm the fact finder. I have to actually hear mm -hmm. your response, judge it against the, way, the evidence that's supposed to be presented by the prosecution, and decide something from that. The more he attempts to meander and grandstand and make political speeches, the less inclined a judge is to have an actual factual predicate to find in his favor. But you know what, Laura? What's uh, interesting about the point you just made is, you're sort of describing uh, a scenario in which this is a normal trial. <laughs> <laughs> and I know normal is not the word we should use for any of this. Yeah. But by that, what I mean is that uh, we have a couple of, uh, of quotes from Donald Trump this morning uh, to the judge, the first two that we have. One is, 
He said, I'm sure the judge will rule against me because he always rules against me. And the second one, this is a very unfair trial. There's the first one. This is a very unfair trial. Very, very. And I hope the public is watching. Elliot, yeah. I spoke to somebody in Trump's world uh, about this going into today who made very clear that what we might see uh, is a aggressive request for a mistrial. Is it possible that, I don't know if we'll get it, but is it possible that the, the tact that the former president took this morning, these are two quotes uh, that are examples, is going for just that. No, I, I rolled my eyes. He's not going to get a mistrial here. In order to uh, get a mistrial, you have to have some egregious error from the court or a jury. We don't have that here. Uh, that deprives the defendant of his ability to have a but fair couldn't trial. They be, couldn't he be baiting the judge into oh, oh, that he, Oh, absolutely. He's baiting the judge yeah. into overstepping or doing something uh, impermissible. Look, and this is uh, to co-sign everything uh, the esteemed Laura Coates has said. <laughs> there's a political strategy and a legal strategy. This is a political strategy playing to the folks in South Carolina or Nevada or wherever else, but not the judge. He could lose this trial on the basis of his conduct. There was a statement that the judge had made. I'm prepared to draw every negative inference against your testimony if you continue doing this, because I can kick you out of this courtroom in a civil trial, and that may well happen. He could lose the trial and lose $250 million. Now, whether voters still vote for him is, is not the judge's concern, but um, you know, it's important to separate out these two things that are happening. And remember, here. by the way, taking a step back, he is arguing on the stand that he was not committing fraud. We're past that. The judge has already said in a summary judgment motion, you have fraudulent statements mm -hmm. that were made in these financial statements. Now the question is how expensive is it going to be for you to try to pay for that, whether you have your business license and beyond. And so they do have these six other counts. They're not going to put all their eggs in one basket as the prosecution. They're going to want to try to prove every single count in this case. But you're talking oranges and apples here when the judge is saying, I've already found against you there. Now convince me why you're not paying the quarter yeah. of a billion you know, dollars. But this is definitional for Trump in so many ways. It's definitional for him in the political sense, which is that he's strong, he fights back, uh, you know, this is what people like about him, he's a fighter, and he's also a victim who's been treated, you know, unfairly. In, in a, a legal sense, in a personal sense, this is what's at stake here, is something he has sold to the public and to himself about his own personal success as a businessman and who he is and the way he identifies himself. I mean, it goes to his very core of who he is. And, you know, for even back in 2016, he went out on the campaign trail and said, you know, I'm very rich and I'm a good businessman and I knew how to take advantage of the tax laws mm -hmm. because I'm smart. And so he doesn't want anybody to show that he wasn't in total control of things, yet, in order to prove his case, he maybe should be doing what his sons did, which is to say, you know what, we didn't really pay attention to this, but he can't, he can't do that. He's having this internal struggle that we're watching. Everybody stand by for a moment. I want to go back to Caitlin Collins. She's in New York outside the courthouse. I understand there's some major developments unfolding. What are you learning? Yeah, Wolf, just as soon as we were talking about how things had kind of tamped down a bit when it comes to the temperature in the courtroom, that appears to have changed because now the Trump, for the former president is on the witness stand. He is attacking the attorney general, Letitia James, who of course brought this case and is seated in that very courtroom. He is calling the investigation disgraceful. He is attacking her as a political hack. And at one point, the judge was letting Trump essentially continue with these answers because the lawyer for the AG's office was saying, I'm not going to strike that from the record. I'm going to let that stay in there because essentially they believe it could potentially be helpful to them. The judge laughed at that and said, OK. And then he continued uh, going on, launching this attack on the attorney general for even prosecuting him in the first place. And so essentially it was just a few moments where there had been no attacks per se directly from the former president. He was just exaggerating uh, about his properties, talking about why the values were what they were. Now it has gotten back to where he is going after the judge and he is going after the attorney general. And I think the question here is how the judge is going to, to respond to that because he was quite frustrated with it earlier today.